I remember the first time I heard the sound of my great-grandfather's heart. I was born months early, and the doctors put me into an isolate, a protective enclosed crib. I was not often touched, or held, or breastfed. And there I remained two weeks, touched only to be cleaned or bottle-fed, on a schedule. At the end of that time, my family came for me. They took me to my grandmother's house, where the relatives had gathered. I remember the moment my great-grandfather took me in his hands and held me against his chest. The warmth of his hands, the scratchy, smooth feel of his starched white shirt, then the smells of starch and his body and the cigarettes he smoked. I remember, too, the sound of his breathing, his slow, soft inhale and exhale, and under it all, much deeper, the muffled reverberation of his heart. Those interweaving sounds called to me, a symphony of breath and heart, washing over me like waters lapping an island shore. His every inhale and exhale pulling me, I moving to their ebb and flow, their rhythms tugging, loosening me, and the shore being left behind currents taking me onward into waters I had never known. My outflowing breath, his inhale, his exhale becoming my life, my heart absorbing his rhythms, two beats moving as one. My tiny life was held in the embrace of his older and more powerful waves, and those waves were a language, carrying within them a meaning far older than words, telling me of being wanted and a part of something that would always be, murmuring that in this place was my place, in this heart my heart. But deeper still, under all of that, there was a substance, some soul food that I needed to become human, that came to me in that moment of unity. I breathed it in with every breath, took it in with every heartbeat, a food as important to my spirit as my mother's milk to my body. And something in me, some tiny doorway opened, and through it flowed this substance, this exchange of soul essence. Out of me, too, it flowed, and he took it in in turn, and his spirit rejoiced. And without this bonding, this joining of two living beings, what is life? What is life without this exchange of soul essence, but tasteless food in some dusty and empty place? And what are we, then, but abandoned and crumpled newspapers, yesterday's stories blowing down some wind-swept, darkened street? 